The Ogun state government says it is adopting the federal government's decision to relax curfew periods amid the coronavirus pandemic. The curfew period in the state now falls between 10 p.m. and 4 a.m. as recommended by the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19. Governor Dakwa Abiodun, however, said that all other restrictions, guidelines and measures taken to curb the spread of the virus in the state will remain. Governor Abiodun said his government will unveil guidelines on Friday to enable religious activities restart on June 19. We now have with us uh, via telephone Ayodiji Olani, medical practitioner. Thank you very much for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. The number of infections in the country continues to rise. How soon do you see a flattening of the curve? Uh, well, thank you for the question. The flattening on the curve is nowhere in sight. I can tell you categorically that we've not been able to detect enough cases. Although nature has been due to us, that we've been able to have less mortality in terms of percentage of affected people and people that have succumbed to the disease. So the curve cannot be flattened for now. So if, if, if the, we don't have, like, from your um, position, a flattening um, on the high horizon anytime soon, what are your specific concerns about the continuous easing of lockdown across the country? Uh, well, uh, the concerns vary from the health issues, social, economical, and also the family, the impact on the family. Um, if you look at it, there's been hula balo about COVID-19. It's expensive to diagnose. It's really expensive to prevent yourself. So you wonder, what's government actually doing? Stop diagnosing, isolating, ensuring people will have a social distance. And the next thing is, because of the social economic impact, an average Nigerian lives on less than $5 per day. So you don't expect such a person not to go out and work. So working does not guarantee that you're bringing money in. Now, to not lock you up is something else. So if you look at it, the importation of goods that are used for the protective equipment, like the PPE, we find that it's been on the right. Common surgical face mask used to be three to three bucks, but now it's about thirteen to fourteen thousand. What doesn't mean about that? The manufacturing companies in Nigeria are they being empowered to produce? It's only one state that's doing that, so it's going to gulp a lot of finances, a lot of revenue to diagnose and to protect. We can make all the policies on this earth, update them, but when the financial model is not there, what do you expect? So you are easy now to actually ease off social economic impact. But medically, we are still going to get across to each other, spread the disease, and pray on Mother Nature to take care of the rest. There, there, there is the... A concern about the numbers, the testing, uh, testing capacity. And so far, we know that since the beginning of June, um, March, when we got the first case, we've been, the country has been increasing its testing capacity um, very frequently. What's your assessment of that so far? Um, is the rate of increasing um, testing capacity good enough, considering the fact that this is a pandemic 
or you're quite impressed with the efforts made by the federal government uh, via the NCDC? Yes, honestly, the increase in testing sites is plausible. You can clap for the government for such initiatives. What was not done for malaria has been done for COVID. Yes, I agree with you. But we have to look critically at the decision of increasing testing sites. A state came out just last month to say it cost about 50000 to screen a person. That's 50000 naira. That's a lot. You find countries like Senegal, China, they are screening at less than $10. That's about 4000 naira or 3000 naira. Okay, fine. How accurate are these diagnostic measures? Because they vary. You can open the testing site, but what's the quality of the investigation that's been done there? We all know that um, isolating a virus, that the, that the virus itself, is the gold standard. But the next is the PCR, that's the polymerase chain reaction. We found out that this kit has been bought at a exorbitant rate. Once government money is involved, people think of it as a contract, and you find something of one error being typed as 100 error, 1,000 error. I'm not accusing anybody, but inflation sets in, but this government money, free money. So the testing size will increase, but the testing kit that should do the job are overpriced. Now, you don't find it into, into two major groups, the PCR and the rapid diagnosis. The government has ruled out the rapid diagnosis testing, which will give you results in 10 minutes. The accuracy ranges from 80 to 97%. The government is not comfortable with the importation of fake products. So they are attempting to manufacture their PCR kit. That's the PCR RNA kit to isolate the virus, the coronavirus itself. It's been important. The method that which is being isolated is obsolete. That's why it takes about four days, five days. Now they're shortening the reaction time to 48 hours. But it won't work. There are newer kits that can do that at cheaper rates. For less than 15 minutes. All right, Doctor. So um, if you have a volume of people trooping in to have the test done, then you have to have something that will shorten the investigation time. All right, uh, Doctor, um, I'm afraid that's the much time will permit us on the news right now. Thank you very much for your insight. Thank you very much.